So going back to where we start with this is using resistance training as a fat loss tool. Maybe it's semantics if you want to look at it this way. In, in, in the way that we're talking about it right now, you did use it as a fat loss tool. Yeah. You used it appropriately and you used it with a lot of other tools that were in your toolbox in order to construct or rebuild this house, yeah. right? So it wasn't that you just pulled the hammer out and everything looks like a nail, yeah. right? And that <laughs> the hammer is the weight loss or excuse me, the resistance training. No, the hammer does something very specific, right? Mm -hmm. But so do all the other tools in the toolbox in order to, to build this house. You need to measure some things. You need a fucking measuring tape, yeah. right? You're, you're going to need a speed square, right? In order to, to make sure you got the right angles on stuff. Otherwise, from that foundation to the time you put the roof on, things are going to look pretty fucked up mm -hmm. if, you, if you don't, if you're, if you're not careful. You'll set the right foundation. Right. Yeah. Things need to be cut to the right length and, and you need to be using the right kind of saw because if, it, if you're using an ax, you know, on a two by four, right? Your house is going to look pretty fucked up. So the point of this being is, is like, I don't know that like the term, like, again, I think it's flashy to say, don't the dangers of using, you know, resistance training as a fat, a fat loss tool or it shouldn't be used as a fat loss tool. But the, the bottom line is, is it does get used as a tool to ultimately lose fat in a very specific application. Yeah. And the, the lumping it all together with very little understanding. And then again, going back to not measuring, like measure twice, cut once, yeah. take this process slow because if I'm trying to rush at the beginning, right, with my foundation, by the time I get to the rafters and the joists and ultimately putting the fucking eaves or the, uh, the roof on my house, it's like that building down the street. I, so remember, CC, we were, I was driving down. We were driving down the street. It burned down the the old uh, party place, the old uh, Williams party place. It's oh, the yes. right up the street. I'm like, look at that roof. And all in. They were almost done with it. They were almost done with the shit. Putting this thing on, they were repairing it because it had been damaged in the fire. I'm like, look at the angle. That roof is so fucked up. Like, how did they get? Like, <laughs> how did that happen? And sure enough. They, then they spent another month and a half tearing it all apart to have to rebuild oh it. God. I'm like, how yeah, much right? money mm -hmm. did that cost Time, that insurance money. company, that contractor yeah, and restart. labor and all yeah. that stuff? Because somebody didn't Fucked check at the beginning, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like didn't didn't have a solid plan. And maybe the plan was there, but the execution was terrible. Mm -hmm. So uh, whatever happened, I was just, you know, and thinking about kind of building the house and you do use, you can use resistance training as a fat loss tool if that's your ultimate goal. But you're not using it to lose fat. You're lose, you're using it to build the muscle burning machine yeah. that can burn the fat when you're in a position to do it, which is a lot more than just building muscle. To be clear, but I, you also said something there about like the conditioning pieces. Yeah. Like his workouts aren't going to look to lose the fat. No, it's not going to be like well now, now we, we're doing all now cardio. we turn on yeah. the high intensity no. yeah. training. Yeah, yeah. Like, exactly. Th there's a time and a place for that too. And like we won't use that. We wouldn't. I wouldn't imagine you guys are going to use that until he's gotten. Deep into the fat loss, uh, you know, into the fat loss goal, or we're down to that last few pounds, and they're just trying to hold on. You're like, okay, we have a very specific goal. Probably get him to a place that he may not be able to maintain very long, right? Yeah. But we, we can, can sprint for a we short can sprint period. for a little bit, pull a few yeah. pounds yeah. off. He can feel good, maybe stay a little leaner for for the vacation or whatever yeah. else, and then maybe puts a few back few pounds on because that's sustainable. Puts, when he puts that back on, though, it's not going to be just an avalanche of body fat yeah. coming yeah. back on. Exactly. So that's as this individual kind of ratchets down and, you know, we'll obviously will step out of the deficit back into like a refeed or a recovery yeah. and he'll increase his calories for a short period of time. And in that period of time, he probably won't gain very much, if any, body fat yeah. because we've set this up properly. Yeah. But when people crash diet and then reintroduce the calories, now I just just load body fat back on because I'm in this metabolically suppressed state to begin with and I'm hungry. Yeah. yeah hungry. <laughs> hungry. hungry all the time. <laughs> yeah. Last thing I'll say, and I bashed Orange Theory. I have no problem doing that. I'll continue to do it. Uh, I know it's done a lot of great things for a lot of people. And I mentioned it's not all negative. It's, it's stocked our gym with fresh new clients constantly. <laughs> so I appreciate them for that. But it's also pulled people into the exercise realm. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people have had some level of success with it. It's been their life jacket. It, it provi it's their life jacket, right? Mm -hmm. for, for the moment. It's like gotten them something. involved. It's, it's, yeah. it's taught them that, there's, that they can do it, right? It is, you know, it, for them, maybe it's hard. And doing that hard thing is taught them something about themselves and what they need to do moving forward. It's also employed a lot of people in the community. It's been a kind of a centerpiece or a positive outlet for people in the community. Those are all good things. From the exercise theory end of things, I think it's dog shit. Mm. And, and the fact that they haven't kind of come out and tried to make some corrections to that in my mind, like publicly, 
I think that's dog shit too. Yeah. I'm not saying we're perfect or anybody else is, but that's just kind of my feeling on it. But going back to the crash dieting, if you are eating or under eating already, whether you understand that or not, and you go to a place like that with the expectation of fat loss, that's effectively your crash dieting. Yeah. That's what you're doing. Mm-hmm. You're just creating a further deficit, which is a crash mm-hmm. Diet, yeah. right? Whatever that is. Like, I don't, I don't really. Diet is the accumulation of all the things that we put in our body with regard to nutrients. Um, and if you're already not putting that in, and then you're piling on you're caloric, just crashing, ben, burning. You're, you're, mm-hmm. you're crashing and burning. Yeah. Call it a crash diet because your diet is going to be part of the crash as well as the additional calorie burning. So, without beating that, beating that up too much, resistance training as a fat loss tool, it's an awesome tool to eventually get to fat loss or be part of your weight loss that has comes from fat loss journey. It's, it's about application. So when you hear people kind of talking about it and putting this stuff out there or they're, you know, they're, 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 they're using it as buzzwords in their marketing, whatever else, like it, look, every gym is going to put lose or build muscle, lose fat somewhere in their, on their website or in their, in their mm-hmm. call to action. Like there's nothing wrong with that. It's how it's applied. Mm-hmm.